Today, I'm going to tell you something very significant. Ron Paul, since the end of uh, the 1970s, or beginning of the 1980s, he was warning Congress not to print more money because he knew about the business cycle. And the business cycle happens when the government, via the Federal Reserve, keeps the interest very low. So people, companies, they make investments based on those low interests, and that's what is called mild investments, because those interests are controlled by the Federal Reserve, and when they want to or they need to, they raise those interests, and those investments that look good at a low interest turn into bad investments. So why am I telling you this? Because this has happened since a long time, the business cycle, the printing of money. And today, well, actually, this past weekend, we, um, we learned that a huge bank, I believe the 16 in the nation, SBB Bank, went under because they took, uh, they made wrong decisions. But it's not really just because of that. It's because the banking model is extremely fragile. It is fraudulent and, it's a, and they are allowed to do it because they make a ton of money. And the government makes it legal, but that's not right that they can multiply money uh, out of thin air. So they don't have to keep reserves. They only need to keep about 10% reserves on the deposits that they receive. So imagine if many people want to come at the same time to ask for their money, there won't be that money at the bank because they don't keep it there. They go ahead and, and loan it again to make interest, to possibly uh, assess charges and penalties on people that get in trouble uh, making those uh, payments. But that's how the banking system works. It is very unfortunate, but it has happened for a long, long time. So today, I was listening to Dan Bongino, very good um, presenter. He has a podcast that has uh, several million people uh, listening to him. Well, maybe I went a little too far, but uh, if you have a million people listening to you, or a couple of million, <laughs> that's a lot of people. And I also heard from uh, the war room with Steve Bannon about the same rhetoric that Biden screwed it up. Yes, yes, Biden screwed it up tremendously. Most that most uh, presidents, but he's not the only one. Every president for the last 20 or 30 years uh, is at fault at that, is at fault of printing too much money. So what can we do? Well, nothing will happen if that system is not reformed. If the banks can keep keeping a laughable reserve on their deposits, on their deposits, if they, if they receive $100 in deposit and they only have to keep 10 or less, Oh, I mean, that's a recipe for, for trouble. And why it didn't happen before? Why it only happened in 2008 and we are of, at a very high risk that it will happen now? Because the United States was a very strong country, very industrialized. 
was a creditor country. But little by little, things were changing, and from creditor, it went to debtor. And today, we are the biggest debtor nation in the world. So that's the reason we saw the catastrophe of 2008. And that's the reason we can see a bigger catastrophe at this time or in the near um, in, a, in the nearby time. So why am I telling you this? Because we need to we need to understand this. I uh, prior to 2008, I knew that that was going to happen because I was already reading about that type of material. When I became a promoter of the infinite banking concept, one of the things that I did back in 2005 was to start reading about money and government. And that really opened my mind because I learned that the governments are not our friends. Unfortunately, they go there to get a, a cushy job, very powerful, where they can uh, have their own, their own systems, their own, their own rules, while the population have different systems and different rules. And I don't know if maybe in the 1800s or, be, or maybe close to the 1900s, uh, people went to government to serve the people. But it's not that way anymore. Nowhere in the world. All the governments, all the people that uh, aspire to government, uh, with exceptions that maybe could be counted in your hand, will in one hand, it won't go there to, to reap the system, to enrich themselves and um, gain power. So it is unfortunate, but that's the type of system that we're living in. So I'm telling you this because we need to be, um, we need to be aware we need to uh, somehow try to protect ourselves by, um, by looking at a way to, to uh, not to let the banks uh, repose. So what can we do? Well, I've been a heavy proponent of gold and silver. So if you can, yeah, invest in gold and silver because traditionally, over history, it has been value as money. But probably easier would be to try to keep a lot of cash at home. And I am not full of that because um, unfortunately, when you, when you keep a lot of gold and silver or cash at home, then you think, that somebody could break in and clean you out. So that's kind of a maybe fear, but um, it's something that it can, it, it can happen. It's, it's not something that is not out of, uh, out of our minds that it, it could never happen. So yeah, I guess you, you could keep the gold and silver and try to hide it or your cash and try to hide it very good. Try to uh, make a hole in your backyard or a, a device uh, or, or put it in a particular jar um, at home or uh, some weird place where you could, uh, uh, where you could um, um, put it away. So that would be something, but um, Another thing that can be done is we need to start being more productive and we need to touch, we, we need to try to create passive income because if we have passive income, then uh, we don't need to be working to get that money. 
to get those um, um, that that um, um, to get those uh, those rewards, which is the the, the passive income, and uh, and it, it helps because let's say that we have a job, and if the economy gets really screwed up, then uh, the employer that was giving us was giving us the the job, he might have to close, so that will put us out of a job. Or maybe they will start cutting hours. If you were full-time, you will end up working part-time. And if you were part-time, you, you will probably be fired. So we need to take control of our economy. And we can take control of our economy by starting a business. But I don't have any money to start a business. Yes, starting a business requires money and requires a different mindset. It requires a mindset of I'm responsible for my future, not a mindset that, hey, I deserve this and the government should take care of me. Because a government big enough to give you everything you want is big enough to take everything you got. So let's look at a mindset of personal responsibility and let's try to start a business. And then again, it requires money and a special mindset. But there's a way that you can start a business without a need of much money. It still requires your mindset that it is your business and you're responsible for it and you have to work it. And it is the uh, network marketing business because the network marketing business allows you to be in business for very little money. From the low, uh, from the low hundreds to the, uh, to the low thousand. I mean, from like a hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, to maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. But considered, considering what a mortar, um, a brick and mortar business will cost you, those are peanuts, because a, a brick and mortar business will cost you several thousands, because just, just your, um, your rent your lease will cost you will cost you more than that. It could cost you fifteen hundred, twenty five hundred dollars a month just your rent. So look at um, at the utilities and look at um, look at the permits and uh, look at all the um, um, all the material the uh, machines that you have to buy to stay in business. So definitely the network marketing business is an option. And I know the network marketing business has a really bad reputation. Why? Because it was sold wrong. It was sold to people that they didn't, ha they didn't need to have personal responsibility, which is it's your business, so you have to work it. Not because it was told, uh, it was told to you that you were going to be able to make a lot of money quick on this business, and that uh, there would be a team that will help you. That doesn't mean that they were going to build your business. So you have to build your business. You have to work on your business, but. That's an option if you are employed, because if you are employed, uh, things could go really bad if you get laid out. But if you already have a side gig, if you already have a home-based business on the side, then you might be able to face the situation 
uh, easier because you might have some money coming in. And if you work this business hard, you might be able to replace the income that your employment can give you. So think about that. Personal responsibility. And I also have told you about the um, I, I also have told you about the infinite banking. And the reason I have promoted the infinite banking since 2006, when I was able to promote it, when I got a license for insurance, because the infinite banking uses a dividend pay, a whole life insurance contract, uh, I promoted it because it gives you control. It gives you control of your money. It helps you succeed from the banking industry that we are stuck in. So you are able to grow capital and keep it safe in the, insur in the insurance industry uh, platform because it's a lot, it's a lot stable. It's a lot safe, safer than the banking industry because the banking industry is extremely speculative and, uh, and they don't care to take on risks because the population is their insurance. Being the population with their taxes or the population with their deposits in those banks because after the um, after the, the, uh, the recession of 2008, there was a change in regulations where um, it, was, it was set as a law or as a rule that, um, that the too big to fail banks were not going to be bailed out anymore. And bail out means with tax money, but then from 2008 on, they were going to be bail in. And bail in is um, bail, bail in from within. Bail in from, uh, I mean, with the money of the bank depositors. So either way, the population gets hurt, either on their taxes, or on their deposits. So you see the graph that is in my background. Well, this graph is very, is very uh, um, uh, updated. It's very present. Uh, I think it was brought, uh, it was published maybe um, um, a couple of days ago. I actually took it from uh, a presentation from the war room. But uh, uh, it's very significant. And let me try to explain it to you. One thing that I see that is missing is that in this graph, they don't show 2008. Because 2008 had to be very similar to what we see now on this, uh, on this here. Uh, this 2000, end of 2022, I mean, no, the whole 2022 year and what is going of 2023. That's what this graph means. But 2008 had to be very similar. But anyway, if we see that in, um, in 2000, after 2008, um, up to 2010, things were very shaky. But, um, but I guess uh, after the, um, the losses of too many people, some people started to, to recover and started to produce. So from 2000, um, from 2008 to 2010, um, the, um, 
the things were uh, were bad, but uh, in 2010, then they started to to uh, present good. It was uh, the the you see the graph it shows in the positive side, and it continued in the positive side till uh, 2000. 16, 17, 18, to 2018. And um, do you remember who was the president that started the presidents in 2017, in January of 2017? It was Donald Trump. So Donald Trump um, received this kind of economy and in uh, 2017 um, and 2018, he probably made some bad decisions on uh, printing more money that, uh, that we should have, have printed. So the economy went, um, went sour, uh, went bad. But then, because of other measures that he took, then the economy started to recover better than the rest of the years. You can see it in the graph. So then came uh, 221. And you remember what happened in, in January 221? Joe Biden took on the presidency. So, he started to do, he started to do uh, bad policies. So the growth that you can see up to 2021 it started to be lost, that growth, because of the policies or the administration that started in 2021. Then came 2022, and you can see, um, you can see the consequences, awful, awful policies that created, at, that, has, that have created tremendous damage. The loss of the uh, uh, energy independence, the, uh, the lockdowns of the, um, the, the, the lockdown on, of, because of the, um, the uh, escandemic virus and, um, and also the terrible decisions, uh, the terrible economic decisions on, um, on, on how, to, um, in, how to force the companies to become woke uh, and all that and also uh, terrible military decisions that uh, created a war uh, in, in Crimea that we are subsidizing so heavily with money that we should not be printing. So you can see there, that's in, in uh, I'm not going to say in, in black and white because it's got some color. It's, uh, it actually has got uh, white and, and green color and red on the arrow that is kind of uh, uh, dramatizing the problem. But uh, I don't think the arrow is necessary, but uh, you can see in the proportion of the bad situation on the investments in the, um, in the economic center sector that we are in trouble. And you can see this graphic uh, belongs to the um, to the Federal Deposit uh, Insurance Corporation, and let me tell you something funny about the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. It is a joke. It is a joke. Why it is a joke? Because they tell the people. They tell the population, don't worry about putting your money in the banking industry 
because the banking industry is safe. We insure it with the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation insure your deposits in the banking industry. So why do I say it is a joke? Let's look at this. In 2008, there were more than 10 trillion of deposits in the banking industry. Do you know how much was the capital in the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation? It was about $80 billion. So can you see that? $80 billion to insure $10 trillion. So how can you insure $10 trillion with, 10 with $80 billion? It's a joke. So, in 2008, where the regulators and the government say that things were going to change, that they were going to fix it, so there would be no more uh, two big banks to fail, they did nothing. So, the things are worse now. Why are they worse? Because the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation now has about $130 billion. So yeah, they went up on, on, on capitalization. That's, that's laudable. That's great. They put $50 billion more into the capitalization. So now they can insure all those deposits. $130 billion in the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. You know how many deposits are today, March uh, 13, 15 of 2023? 17 trillion dollars. So how far can 130 billion dollars go to insure 17 trillion dollars. So whenever you hear somebody telling you that um, don't worry about to invest in our bank or in our, uh, um, uh, what is that called? In our, uh, um, um, well, how, whatever the deposit they call, I mean, a deposit where they are going to pay you a miserable interest of maybe 1.5% at the most if you keep their money with them for five years. And they say, your money here is safe, don't worry about it, because it's federal, it's FDIC insured, uh, so it's covered by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation laugh at them because they are telling you a joke because 130 billion dollars cannot even scratch the surface to insure 17 trillion dollars so i hope you get something out of this so try to take your money out of banks but don't go and take it all at a time because then you will cause a bank run and then the economy will all be, it will totally collapse. So um, try to move your money out of the bank, but don't go all of you at a time. Just try to talk to your neighbors and tell them, hey, are you taking money out of your bank this week? The, no, okay, good, because I'm going to take money out of the bank this week. So uh, we have to be careful on that because a bank run happens too easy. A few people going to the bank to demand their money, it can create a bank run, and then the bank collapses, and then the economy collapses 
because that's the type of economy that we have. But if you want to do a better, a better solution, learn about the infinite banking. I have put a few videos about the infinite banking concept. Contact me at jorgeeherrera.com and I teach you about all the benefits of the infinite banking concept so you can succeed from this banking system. And if you want to make some extra money, then start your side gig. And look, if you don't have much money, look at the, um, at the network marketing industry. Look for a good company. I could recommend a few because I have been in the, I have been involved in network marketing for several years, so I have had my experiences, so I can recommend a few. So contact me at jorgeeherrera.com and uh, we can talk about that. A side gig that you could start or how you could implement and see if you could qualify to implement the infinite banking concept in, for your family or for your small business. I hope I was able to uh, open your eyes because you need to investigate this. And I haven't even talked about um, CBDC. That's another horrendous danger that is uh, looming in our future because the banking industry will probably throw with a tremendous advertisement that that's the solution to the problems that we're getting into. Um, a central bank digital currency, they'll probably throw that with tremendous advertising that that's the solution that we need. And that's just what would be the biggest thing that could give them control, a central bank digital coin. See you next time. Thank you for the